Okay, we're going to wing to start a new chapter in English. It's our last project for the year. We are skipping chapter 15. Chapter 15 does a lot of review over parts of a book, table of contents, using a dictionary. Talk, uh, it talks about guide words. It talks about sample sentences, definitions, all of those things that we've really already covered in our reading book. Um, so because I really, really want you to get this research writing done, we're going to skip that. And anything that we need from that chapter, I will address when we need it in this chapter on research. We're on pages 337 and 338, chapter 16. And it's called Writing a Research Report. Your targets are, I can identify facts in a text. I can identify the parts of a research paper. I can differentiate between facts and opinions, which we did in our last writing, and I can choose a topic for the research report. Now, uh, most of you were at our Zoom meeting this morning. I'm making this on Thursday for you guys to use next week, and we talked about the fact that you will be able to choose whatever animal you wanted to write about. It does not have to be an animal that's listed on the workbook page unless you just want it to be. Because I know that some of you already have some favorite animals that you'd like to write about, and I'd like to hear about them. If you will look on page 337, research is gathering facts about a topic from observations or nonfiction sources. Now let's talk about, before we get into that, why research is important. A research report helps us learn more about a topic. It answers questions about a topic with facts. Facts are found in sources. Nonfiction books may be used as sources. Another source is the internet. You can find helpful facts in many truthful sources. The most trustworthy source is God's Word. The Bible is truth. We should check all other sources with the Bible. The Bible helps us to think rightly about every part of life. As you research an animal, remember that God created all animals. This fact is found in the Bible in the book of Genesis when it says that God created the heavens and the earth. He created the water, the sky, the firmament. He created the plants and the animals, and then he created man and woman. In John 17, 17, it says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Because God declares that his word is true, it is the standard that all research and writing should be guided by and conform to. So, put anything up against the Bible, and the Bible should trump every time. All right, so I have a couple of sheets here, and you probably have them on your computer because I sent them through to your parents. It says May 4th through 8th, but that's because I had planned to do this a different week. But this is the picture that you see. And at the top of the page, it says, research is gathering facts about a topic from observation or nonfiction sources. Remember, non means not, fiction means fake. If it's nonfiction, it's not fake. List facts about an elephant by observing the photo. So that means that we're going to use this picture and we're going to list facts that we see from using the picture. So when I look carefully at this picture, this elephant looks like a reddish color. Now, I did, I won't, I will be truthful. I did look up on the internet what color elephants are because we always think of them as gray. And it did say that they're gray, but it said that the African elephant often looks red because it rolls in mud and that makes it look red. So this elephant, the elephant looks red. All right, now, some other things that you notice, I know you know these white things right here are called tusk. So the elephant has tusk. All right. Something else that you notice 
I know you all probably noticed this big thing here. It's called, a, we call it a trunk. So the elephant has a trunk. And I'm also going to put in large ears. Now, um, in researching elephants, there's the Asian elephant and the African elephant, and one has bigger ears, one has smaller ears. And then the last thing that I notice is that this elephant is eating grass. So just from looking at the picture, I have observed some facts. Another fun fact that I'm going to tell you about an elephant that I didn't know, but you know I like to research. Um, the trunk is technically called a proboscis, and that made me think of butterflies, which I love butterflies. That's why I have fennel planted outside, hoping some butterflies are going to come by and lay eggs this year. But a butterfly also has a proboscis, and that's how they suck nectar out of plants. The elephant's trunk is called a proboscis, and that's how he sucks up that water and then sprays it out. I just thought that was a neat, fun fact. Okay, so one way that we can gather facts or by looking, one way to gather facts is by observing pictures. All right, now, a second way to find facts about an animal is to read a nonfiction book so or a nonfiction source. So if you have nonfiction books at home about your animals, you can pull facts from those books. But if you don't have books about animals that are nonfiction, you can always go to the internet. And this is the second page that should be attached to your lesson plans. And on this computer screen are some facts about elephants. So we're going to assume that they went to a site on the internet and they learned these facts and I'll read them to you. Elephants live in family groups. The elephant family helps care for the baby elephants and a young elephant needs its mother for three years. So there are three facts that we learned from the nonfiction internet source about elephants. One is that they live in family groups. Two, the family group helps care for the baby elephants. And three, a young elephant needs its mother for three years. So they're social animals. They live in groups and they all take care of the baby. All right. Um, if you will look at workbook page 337, we've read the chapter title, we've read the, quest, uh, the question, and we've talked about the worldview. So we did that. We are good. The last sentence of a paragraph is called the ending sentence, and it retails the topic sentence, kind of like the opinion paragraph your opening sentence and your ending sentence were your opinions and they mimicked each other. On page 338, look at the name of the article. It says, excerpt from what is a marsupial. Now the difference, it also has the author's names by Gail Fitzgerald and Amy, I'm not going to tell you that I know how to say that, Shonen Weiss. I'm not going to say I know how to pronounce that. An article is shorter than a whole book. The title of the article has quotation marks around it. Titles of articles are not underlined. They have quotation marks around them. That lets us know it comes from an article. It is not from a book. Why are some of the words in the title capitalized? Well, it's just like writing the title of a book, capital letters, in article names are just like capital letters in book titles. The first and last words and all important words are capitalized. All right, let's look at the informational article about kangaroos. It says the first section is adult kangaroos. There are many kinds of kangaroos. Some kangaroos can grow to be six feet tall. That is taller than most adults. The kangaroo can weigh 145 pounds. A kangaroo's strong tail can grow to be longer than three feet. So we learned some facts about adults. 
They can grow to be more than six feet tall. They can weigh up to 145 pounds. Their tail can be up to three feet long. Habitat, which is where they live. Kangaroos live in Australia and a few other countries. Most kangaroos live on the grasslands, but some kangaroos live in trees. So we know what an adult looks like. We know where they live, which is in, mostly in Australia on the grasslands. Some live in trees. And then food. Kangaroos that live in the grasslands eat grass. Tree kangaroos eat mostly leaves and fruit. I'll be honest, I don't think I've ever seen a tree kangaroo. So now we know what they look like, where they live, and what they eat. The last section is protection. The back legs of a kangaroo are big and strong. Its strong legs help a kangaroo hop very fast. Some kangaroos can jump as high as nine feet and as far as 25 feet. Kangaroos jump high and far to get away from their enemies. If a kangaroo is cornered by an enemy, it will use its strong back legs to protect itself. One kick from a kangaroo can kill an animal or a man. Those are some pretty strong feet. Nine feet high, 25 feet long. That's like to the, I, I'm trying to think, nine feet is probably the height of some of your bedroom ceilings. 25 feet. Oh, uh, is about almost to the 10 yard line on the football field. That's 30 feet. So you see how far that is. Some facts we learned, we discussed each paragraph as we went. Um, in this lesson, you will identify the parts of a research paper. Each student, each of you will complete a research paper and we'll have a cover that will include the title, your name, and a picture. All right, so I've made this. This is my sample, All About Owls by Ms. Millette. So I have my title, I have my author's name, which is me, and then I have a picture of an owl. Yeah, I did that on purpose. All right. On the inside, I have my paper. How many paragraphs are in my paper? Well, there's paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three. You guys are going to write a paper that has three paragraphs. Each paragraph will have a topic sentence. So when I read the first sentence in paragraph one, it says owls are many different sizes. So I'm telling you, hmm, I might need to go back and change that one because really what I'm supposed to be, my topic sentence should have been, is what owls look like. So I, Miss Millette, need to go back. That's an editing. I need to go back and change my topic sentence because that doesn't answer what I want it to answer. The first paragraph that you're going to write about will tell you what your animal looks like, okay? The middle part of the paragraph gives me the details, and then the details support the topic sentence. You are going to write a research paper about an animal. The report will include many interesting facts and details about the animal. You can only include facts about a topic. You do not include your opinion or how you feel. I didn't put in here that I thought that it was gross that an owl can turn its head almost all the way around. I didn't put that. I might think it, but I didn't put it. I didn't put it has big eyes and those big eyes freak me out. I might think it, but that's not a fact. They do have large eyes. They can turn their heads almost all the way around, but I can't put how I feel about that. All right, listen to this one. Owls live all over the world except Antarctica. In my second paragraph, my topic sentence tells me about where they live. And then these sentences beneath it are the details that support where they live. And in the last paragraph, it says owls are meat eaters. So in the last paragraph, I'm going to learn about what they eat. And these sentences support 
telling about what they eat. Nowhere in there do I tell how I feel about what they look like. I don't tell you how I feel about where they live, and I don't tell you how I feel about what they eat. I only state the facts. Listen to these two sentences. Some ladybugs are red, and I like ladybugs. One of these sentences is a fact, and one of them tells the writer's feelings about ladybugs. Which sentence tells a fact? Well, some ladybugs are red tells a fact. Could a writer include, I like ladybugs, in the research report? And the answer is no, because that's telling how you feel about ladybugs, and that's not what a research report does. Listen to this sentence. A ladybug lays hundreds of eggs. Is this sentence a fact or an opinion? That's a fact. Where can you find facts about insects? Well, if you have a nonfiction book at home, that would give you facts about insects, or you can go on the internet, and that will give you facts. You could also go to your public library, and I'm sure they would have books that will give you facts. Um, my research report was about owls. The title was all about owls, and you have several paragraphs. Each paragraph has a different topic, and then details that support the topic. So when you finish, you'll need a book cover, you'll need your report, and then you'll need a back cover so that it's like a book. Now, ideally, we would be at school, and we would be able to make a classroom book. And I would so love to be able to make a classroom book of your research reports. So when you guys get them done, if you will please send them to me, I will try to comp compile it and put it together with a table of contents and give you all a copy of each other's reports so that you have a class book of information on different your friend's different favorite animals. All right, so your job is to complete workbook pages 339 and 340, and then um, you're going to, on 340, you're going to write the name of the animals in the web, but at the bottom, it asks you to write what your research report will be about, and it does not have to be one of the animals on the page. We already discussed it. I already have in my head what some of you said you would like to write about. So today you're just choosing your topic, okay? All right, guys. I am super, super stoked. I am excited. I know I'm going to learn some things that I didn't know. And let's get this done. Love you guys.